Hi, how you doing? Catch Wrestling is a fundamentally superior fighting system to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and yet it's ultimately doomed. As you're probably fully aware if you've watched any of my older videos, I consider myself to be a catch wrestler. Not a particularly good one. I discovered wrestling far too late in life to ever be fantastic at it, and I've been dealing with a crippling knee injury for the last four years. I fractured my right lateral femoral condyle through the articular surface. It was surgically opened and screwed back together again. But my personal skill level on the mats aside, I've been doing it for a long time now about a decade fairly seriously, and I've trained under some of the most famous catch wrestling coaches in the world. Billy Robinson, Roy Wood, Marty Jones, Wade Shallows, Josh Barnett, to name a few. So when I talk about catch, I do have some understanding of the practicalities and the history of the art. When it comes to BJJ, however, for most of the last decade I've been little more than a dabbler. A few classes here, a few classes there. However, about eight months ago I decided to change that. I've been training two to three times a week under Matt Whiten, Country Boy Jiu Jitsu. He's a black belt under Andy Roberts. It's been a bit of a revelation, to be honest, and I've grown to love it. Even the gi. But enough of that. I baited you into clicking on this video with a somewhat controversial title, so it's probably best that I explain myself. I do believe that catch wrestling is ultimately doomed, and there are a number of reasons why. The first reason is that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu just looks cooler to the uninitiated. There's an entire cultural mythology around martial arts that permeates everything we do, from the uniforms people wear to the fact that it comes from the mystical East, from the black and white photos of old men hanging on dojo walls to the coloured belts we strive to earn. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu ticks all of those boxes, and catch wrestling just doesn't. Despite the fact that those old men of jiu-jitsu were Brazilian and not Japanese, they still wear the same sort of clothes, they still use Japanese names for many techniques, and when they don't, they use Portuguese names. To the average Westerner who speaks neither Japanese nor Portuguese, the mystique remains intact. Catch Wrestling, on the other hand, has a history of old men from Lancashire wearing baggy homemade singlets, or even worse, badly fitting black trunks. It takes place in drafty, unheated buildings on the edge of allotments, and the historical giants of the sport sit alongside wrestlers like Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks and Adrian Street. While none of this has any actual bearing on the effectiveness of the art itself, you can see why a person might swing towards a dojo with a photo of Helio Gracie in a white gi on the wall, as opposed to one of Billy Riley in his Sunday best shirt and tie. As if that wasn't enough, wrestling's really hard, both in terms of strength, but also in terms of cardiovascular fitness. I know for a fact that I'm not the only person who's worked themselves so hard that they've had to leave the mats to throw up. I'm not for a second suggesting that BJJ isn't ever hard work. It is. I sweat like a pig when I'm rolling, and usually spend some time at the side of the room gasping for breath, but it's perfectly feasible for a man who's worryingly close to 50, carrying a reasonable amount of extra weight, and dealing with a significant long-term injury to get through a BJJ warm-up, a bunch of technical drills, and an hour of rolling without needing to stop. The whole point of it is that it's incremental. It's about position over submission, working from top or bottom, and that you use technique over just strength. Whereas catch wrestling is about physically dominating your opponent, about using your strength, using your weight, using your ability to cause your opponent significant pain in order to get the win, doing whatever it takes, and pushing yourself as hard as you have to. Quite recently, I was given a bit of a talking to by one of my old wrestling buddies because I'd stopped being a wrestler and was happy to just take on a much more passive role in training. In essence, I wasn't using the stuff that I'd learned over the last 10 years in order to improve the outcomes of my rolling. That night at training, I made a point of going in as a catch wrestler, of setting out to smash everyone I rolled with. And with the exception of Matt, the instructor, I kinda did. But it absolutely destroyed me. 
It opened my eyes to how much cardiovascular fitness you need to be able to consistently perform at that level. Fitness I simply don't have anymore. But more importantly, I suspect it wasn't really any fun for the people I was rolling with. Which leads me beautifully onto the next point. There's a certain etiquette, a way of behaving that's expected of you when you start to train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Obviously, there's one for catch too, but it is different. Over a pretty short amount of time, you'll learn that muscling out of techniques is frowned upon. Defeating someone simply because you happen to be bigger or stronger isn't really the done thing at the lower grades at least. You're expected to get the technique, to spend time learning exactly how you can apply the principles of the move, and not just pick someone up and break them. You're expected to be in control all the time, not to spaz out. You're taught to use pressure, but not to do stuff simply because it hurts your opponent. I've often joked that I've spent the last 10 years learning exactly how to be that guy that no one wants to roll with. Depending on where you train, wrist locks might be out. Leg locks are certainly not allowed for lower grades in a lot of schools, and the less said about slams and neck cranks, the better. Much like the slow, incremental approach to getting a move to work that's expected of people learning, there's an incremental nature to your progression to the point where you're allowed to be strong. A brown belt can muscle out of that armbar with no issues, because as they will undoubtedly tell you, if you'd got the technique exactly right, it would have worked anyway. But if as a white belt you pick up a brown belt who's attempting to armbar you and threaten to slam them into the floor, you will, probably rightly, be told it isn't the done thing. The approach in catch is slightly different. You need to be training on strength, on speed, on fitness. You should be looking at slamming or suplexing your opponent if you can. And if they let you take a neck crank, then just take it. If you cross face someone and they aren't left counting their remaining teeth, you probably didn't do it right. As I was told by one marvellous old timer, never pass up on an opportunity to cause pain to your opponent. And as Wade Shallis said, I've never killed anyone on the mats, but I've made a lot of people think I was going to. He's a man who created the best-selling instructional series, Legal Pain. The last point I want to make before I wrap this up is that the difference between catch and BJJ now is much smaller than it was a decade ago. And that's because of the attitude of jiu-jitsu practitioners towards new techniques. Because of the competitive nature of the sport, jiu-jitsu practitioners are always looking for that extra edge. A wrestler will look for that extra edge by becoming faster and stronger and bigger and, you know, just better at doing what they do. But in BJJ, I don't know, a decade ago, leg locks were considered dangerous. There was a lot of debate about whether they should be allowed or not. Now, they're simply part and parcel of training. Some schools limit them for lower grades, but not all of them by any stretch. And the number of them that do that is shrinking all the time. When something is shown to work, it's adapted into the jiu-jitsu body of knowledge. You're as likely to see a BJJ black belt teaching a high crotch or a blast double as an armbar from Mount, despite the fact that those are clearly wrestling moves. The things that used to set catch apart are slowly but surely being assimilated into BJJ. And as more and more catch wrestlers succeed in the world of BJJ, the faster this will occur. It won't be long before there's almost nothing left that we can say is a catch wrestling technique. You can head over to BJJ Fanatics right now and download an instructional from Josh Barnett looking at neck locks. They've stuff from Kazushi Sakuraba, from Neil Melanson, even from Yoshiaki Fujiwara. If it works, it becomes part of jiu-jitsu. So what's left for catch? I opened with a pretty strong claim that it was a fundamentally better system. Why is that? Well, catch wrestlers are better at starting from standing. If you really want to learn how to shoot in on someone, then you need to learn it from a wrestler and not a jiu-jitsu instructor. If you want to learn how to throw someone, then yes, you can look to judo. There are some amazing instructors out there, like Brian Glick, whose judo is simply sublime. But without a gi, you're much better looking at the standing takedowns and throws of catch. Their influence on Greco-Roman is pretty clear. On the ground, wrestlers scramble better. Years of fighting for or against a pin give you a very different perspective on where you should be and how to get there. 
wrestlers are better at using pressure and pain in order to control their opponent. Look at the way Josh Barnett submitted Dean Lister after no one had been able to do that for 16 years. But is that enough to save a system? I'm not convinced it is. Betamax was technically better than VHS. Mini discs were technically better than CDs, but it didn't save them. But now I want to hand over to you. What do you think? Am I right? Or have I just missed the point? Stick something in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you've enjoyed this video, then the chances are that you'll probably enjoy some of the other videos I've made in the past, and hopefully some of the ones I'll be making in the future. I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. In reality, it makes very little difference to your experience of YouTube, but it does change how the algorithm treats my channel. And for the very few of you still here at the end of this video, fight team!